What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to JD Plays Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved. Expert mode. Yeah, on the Acrid server. And last time we got some cool stuff done. We set up, well, of course we had the smeltery set up. We got the blast furnace set up and made some steel. And we made some flint and steel. And we laid down a portal to Twilight Forest and a portal to, hey, I got grass growing. Awesome. To the nether. And I've decorated that portal area just a little bit. I put down an apiary, but we're not ready for bees quite yet. We've got some other things we need to do, and I've updated the to-do list. Ta-da! This is supposed to say traveler's gloves. There we go. Let's fix that. So we want to start off, first things first, we want to make a knapsack. But we've got a lot of junk on us. Now, you can see I'm kind of doing farming, 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 on the edges of my base right now. Uh, due to space constraints, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. And I'm going to do a little more farming out here, actually. Because we need to get some string production going. Now, there are better seeds that I could be planting, but these are just in my way. I'm also trying to kind of free up some inventory space, so we're going to lay some cotton seed down. And we're going to get into proper farms probably within the next episode or two so that we get better... Uh, food production. We've got a lot of resources we need to get going. Plus, we need to start looking at crop mutations and things like that to prepare for Batania and witchery and all that other fun stuff that we want to do. So we've got some seeds down. Now, these seeds are the seeds we're concerned with right here. This is uh, Candleberry. And somewhere, I guess I did not bring one out here right quick. Let's go right here. We're going to make some fertilizer, but I need my digger's pack back. I had some sand set aside for this. So we gathered up a bunch of appetite along the way. So we're going to take 10 of it, mix it with some sand, and we're going to get back 80 fertilizer from that. That's a good amount of fertilizer. We're going to need to take these candleberry seeds that are sitting over here just jay chilling, and we're going to need to fertilize them and produce a bunch of candleberries. So let's make candleberry. We're going to use the candleberries to make wax. And I probably don't need this many, but I'm going to make this many anyways, just for shiggles. That way, if I ever need to make any more, I can. Alright. That probably all went into the forestry pack, I would assume. There we go. Alright, we got 48 of those. Now, what we want to start off making, I'm not going to do the knapsack just yet. We're going to do the gloves first. And these gloves are great. They're traveler's gloves. Uh, I need to turn off the filtering of my search. These come from Tinker's Construct. And before we could make these just using six leather, they've changed the recipe in the latest update to require hardened leather. All hardened leather is is regular leather combined with wax. And to get wax, you've got a couple of different ways. We're going to get wax this way. Four candleberries gives us a wax, but we need a pot. And to get a pot, we need a stick and four ingots of either the type copper, iron, or steel. Yeah, let's waste steel on this. That's not going to happen. We'll use copper. We picked up a bunch of copper this time around by running around in uh, robbing villages, which was so much fun. And this pot will come in handy for other things as well. Uh, in fact, this pot's one of the primary components to making cheeseburgers. So we'll take our pot and we'll take our candleberries. We'll toss them in here, and we will retrieve wax. And we're just going to set our pot down. Now the pot, just like the saucepan, is another cooking device. So I told you we'd be making more of those. We'll just stick it right up there for now. The pot is very useful for making other things as well, which we will get into much later. Well, we've got some leather somewhere. I love going through these chests every single time since I forgot what's in them. I should probably like identify these with some, uh, what do you call it, item item frames or something. Maybe the leather's in my hunter's pack. Let's check. There it is. Fantastic. All right, we need six. And that's half of these. So there's our six hardened leather. Okay. Now you can also make actual hardened leather armor out of this stuff, so it's pretty cool substance. But we need a glove. Fancy, fancy. Gloves go in your, not in baubles, I'm sorry. Gloves go into this equipment tab, and you equip them right here. But before we do that, let's pick them back up. 
back to the searching we go. Bam. Oops, drop that. We're going to take this and we're going to put this on the gloves and enchant them with haste. This makes us mine a little bit faster. So that's why we want the gloves, is to have haste on them. They Basically anything that involves us swinging our hand, gloves make it go a little bit faster. That's what I've read. I don't know the full details and stats. We're going to trust it. I always make them. I like them. We're doing it. It's done. As for the rest of this wax, we do not need it right this minute. We're going to toss it in here. And we'll get back to it later. Now the next thing that I want to make is going to be the knapsack. And this is also from Tinker's Construct. This one's going to take six more leather, two uh, iron tough rods, and an aluminum brass ingot, which we have prepared over here. So right here we've got the iron all set and ready to go. Let's pour it into the cast. We've got a tough rod right there. Almost everything you're seeing on the screen is a mod. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to say your name. I'm just going to call you mm -hmm. OMG. It's just like that, buddy. All right. And we've already got the aluminum brass ingot. The aluminum brass ingot is made by combining three aluminum to one copper and usually you'll sm start off by smelting that in the uh, smelter over there that's also what we use to make the majority of our casts most of the time because it's easier to come by than gold early game so we'll take these combine them all together and that will give us our knapsack the knapsack looks like these backpacks but it's quite different the knapsack actually equips just like the gloves do from Tinker's Construct into the slot and it will actually call give you an extra tab here that you can access for additional inventory so we now have even more storage space with it in, with which we can lose items. Yay. But until we get some better bags, this is a great place to store tools that you're not using currently. Which is what I like to use it for. Let's put those glue balls in here. Alright, so we've got two things knocked off the top of the list. Let's save that list. And the to-do list is going good. Now let's look at the thermionic. Alright, Yoey. So for a thermionic fabricator, we're going to need a bunch of bronze. Actually, we're going to need a bunch of gold. I lied. We are still going to need a bunch of bronze. We need bronze ingots times four. We need bronze gears times four. Each bronze gear also takes four ingots. So really, we need four, eight, 12, 16, 20 bronze ingots to make this sturdy casing. Then we're going to need some gold. So let's go take a look at where, how we're doing with bronze ingots right now. I don't even think I've made an ingot pattern yet. We do happen to have enough bronze ingots to get this done. But we need to make a gear pattern. So gear. A stone gear will work. And we can make a wood gear and then actually can we make that with a, we could probably make that with a wood gear. There's cobble. We'll just need to chisel it. So bust out your chisel. Bust out some cobble. Come over here. Nope. Yep. Clicky, 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 clicky. And stone. There we go. Take our stone gear, throw it in our smeltery, accept our achievement. Now we've got our next cast. And we'll throw that down there. So we want to take our bronze, all but one ingot. Four of them need to stay bronze. The other 16 need to go back in and be melted down. So we'll do that right quick. Now let's go back to the thermionics recipe. Or thermionic, however you want to say it. We're also going to need a touch of glass, four gold, and a golden chest. Now, the golden chest is not going to be fun to make. It's going to require quite a bit. We're going to need eight golden plates, which is going to take two ingots each, so 16 golden ingots there, around an iron chest or a silver chest. We're going to do iron. So that's also going to take 16 iron ingots, and we're going to need our forge hammer to make those. So let's grab out 16 of these and 16 of these. Our forge hammer is right here. Pop the iron in, pull out the plates, pop the gold in, pull out the plates. We need a chest, and we need to pick up our forge hammer. We've got a chest right here. Do I have an extra crafting table in there? I do. We need to get one for out here. Let's go ahead and convert that to one of these. And we'll just set that bad mamma jamma down right there. Alright, so we can take this chest, surround it with iron plates. 
take the iron chest, surround it with golden plates. There's our gold chest. What are we going to do about glass? I know I've got some somewhere. Let's see if this stuff's ready to go. Are you ready? Yeah, we got some bronze right here. Click it. Let's get out of the rain and grab some Z's before the monsters come to kill me. And let's find some glass right quick. See you in a minute, Ulta, when you come back from your DC. Hey, there's stone right there. I'm always looking for that stuff. We should put it in here. There's all my books. Damn it. I was looking for those a minute ago. All right. Glass, glass, glass. Do we have some glass? We got sand. I could make some more glass. Oh, I got blast furnaces. I can cook this stuff now. Let's make, well, we need the railcraft blast furnace. So if you want to smelt this stuff back into steel, you can't use the blast furnace from immersive engineering. You actually have to have the railcraft blast furnace. Keep that in mind. Uh, no glass. No glass. Oh, well, glass. All right, so I keep most of my glass as uh, quite clear glass. That way we can break it without it shattering. And we'll grab these three regular glass. All right, we need to pour a few more, whoops, bronze ingots, or gears, I should say. And there they are. We need two more. Goodbye, Yoey. All right. So there's our four bronze gears. And what we're going to do is we're just going to shift. Or we're going to make this first. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the recipe and we're going to shift click it. And it's going to place all the items in the grid for me. And then I can... What I shift clicked was the question mark, by the way. So mouse over this. If you left click this, it's going to put the ghost pattern in for you that will tell you where you need to put items. So when you open this, if I cl cl click on whatever I want and I just regular click the question mark, it'll put the ghost pattern in so I can see where to put things. If you have everything to make it and you shift click, it will automatically attempt to put the items in for most recipes. Doesn't always work. It is known to fail sometimes, especially on items that can use. Uh, various versions of things, but it's getting better it seems. So now we need to do the same thing for the thermionic. That time the shift click did not work, probably because I'm missing something, and I am, I'm missing the golden ingots. So let's grab four of those. Try that again. And there we go. Now we have a thermionic fabricator. What needs to happen now is I need to go get some diamonds. And part of what we opened up the Twilight Forest portal for was it allows us access to higher end ores much more quickly. Uh, how that works out is the Y level for Twilight Forest by default is much lower than the Y level in the normal world, which means we get down lower to, and closer to you know the, the important, well I wouldn't say they're any more important or less important, but the more rare, the more deep ores. And we're off to the Twilight Forest. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I'm torn. The nether of the... Okay, the forest. Now, I have zoned into the Twilight Forest already. That way it wouldn't crash me when I zoned in with you guys. And this is our starting point. And if you look on the map, we can already see one. Let's go ahead and make right here. So, exit. And let's put this down at a Y of 32 so that it's down in the little pool. But look on the mini-map just to our south. We can already see the wall. And I think that's a Naga area, which will probably mean we'll get wrecked if we go in there. Because we do not have anywhere near the level of armor and stuff that we had last time we came to the Twilight Forest. So this place is way more dangerous than last time. And there's probably something that's going to get me killed right off the bat in the form of a gigantic hay bale. And yes, that's the Naga chamber over there. That's bad for me. Is there a spawner in here? There is. Let's get my handy dandy pickaxe out. Get rid of that little spawner. Okay. Let's go harvest us some more hails of bay. Alright, 
So with the fortunate with the fortunate <laughs> being fortunate to find that right off the bat is a big deal because now we are if we do get into a bind we can sit here and make a lot of bread at least okay we need to look for a raven so let's keep our eyes peeled for a raven there's a raven let's try to kill that raven hello raven do you want to be my friend little forest raven hey -ah! no don't fly away come back I've lost the raven there he is, there he is. Quote the raven evermore. Did we get a raven feather? I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Alright, we're gonna go try to kill this raven now. <laughs> hi -ya! Come back here. He's so mean. Yay, raven feather. Okay. The wildlife IT is here to serve me, okay? Just remember that. Now, take the raven feather and some paper, which is our sword repairing item, remember. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. We need, we need something else first. I have to do that thing. We need to use the raven feather with some glowstone and some torch berries. All right, somewhere in here. I, well, well, there's glow. That's not what we want. I've got actual stuff right there. Bam. All right, so now we just need some torch berries. We should probably take some extra paper. We need to find a source of torch berries. Normally, I look for those underground. But I can see a hill right there. Usually, those hills are hollow. What is that? Oh, that's probably one of those druid houses where I'm going to get destroyed if I go over there. So we're not going to go over there. So usually these hills are hollow hills, and you can find all kinds of amazeballs resources inside. But they are also dangerous. So let's get our toolkit set up to fight here in Rumble. We've gotta get ready to go into Rumble mode, boys and girls. We need torches in the last slot. There we go. And let's do this. What is that? Yellow right, okay. Right up, right up. So if you look right now at the map, we're already at a Y level of 27, and we just stepped down off of the main, you know, height of this dimension. That's why it's there's torch berries. Yes. See, we're already at gold and uranium and everything else down here. So there's some torch berries. And underground, you're gonna find different kinds of roots. Some of these roots can be broken to give you sticks. So if you're struggling and you need torches. You can break these down and get sticks out of them. Lots of gold. There's plenty of coal ore around. Alright. So we're going to take our torchberry, our glowstone, and our feather. This will give us a magic map focus. You can use this with eight paper to make a blank magic map. Which we need my crafting table for. So eight of these. And there's our magic map. All right, pick up our table, and let's get a look at our surroundings. The map draws as you go into the areas, and there are Nagas everywhere. Holy shnikes. So big green lizard things are Nagas. The square green thing is more or less a uh, hedge maze. And then we see the, the glacier is down to our south with the quest hubs. We see a few hills, things of that nature. There's usually an entrance to one of these. There probably would be one if I looked around a little bit more, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to dig in. There we go. And these things are usually loaded down with minerals. And spawners. So be ready to fight. It's all good, Spider-Man. Alright, so there's a spider. Little spitter. Die, spitter. 
Sorry, Spider-Man. I'm having to kill your homies, though. They like to bite me, and I don't like that. Now, there are ass tons of monsters down here. I mean, literal, just tons of them. So, when you come in here, be ready to brawl. Cobalts. I need to heal up before I get too deep in here. I don't know what that dude's doing. They're all like dancing around. What? Why are they jumping all around? I'm gonna die. There's too many of them. This is the end of JD. Version 1.0. Oh, there it goes. Damn it. To the body. I have a feeling my body is right there. Zombies are like, well, shit. Okay. Let's not do that. We got a juicer right here we can use. Alright, so let's readjust all of our gear here. Now the problem with the knapsack is it pops off. And when it does, your stuff falls to the ground. But we can still use it for fast pickup. And now we've got even more tools on us. It's probably good that we went and got an extra sword, though, because that paper sword is probably going to break a lot. Alright, let's have some OJ. Or actually, this is CJ, you know, carrot juice. That's a spiked zombie, and he sucks. Come here. Come here, friend. Let's talk. You and me, spiky. I hate those things. Alright, let's see if he gives me a potion. Nope, just gold coins. Alright, YouTube. I'm going to start exploring around. If we come across diamonds or something cool, I'll bring you guys back. But I'm going to drop the video for a moment while we explore. Alright, guys, we're back. And if I pull up my little map here, you'll see that I found myself a uh, large hill. We were originally back over here in that small hill where we died a minute ago. And we're in a large hill now. And based off of the advice of Drago, Clear Drago from my stream, he said rather than coming in from the bottom of the, the tall, of the, what do you call it? Large, hollow hill, whatever you call it, come in from the top. So I did. I dug in directly from the top because all the ores are in the ceiling anyways. There's a lot on the ground as well, though. But look at the size of these veins. Look at all this redstone. Look at all the iron, salt, 
here's coal. Those are diamonds. There's more diamond. There's more diamond. Here's copper. Uh, and basically, I built a platform. There's lots of stalagmites. I dug in and I just started building myself a platform. And I've made a massive platform. The only thing that I've dug out of the wall so far down here is there were several really large lapis veins right here. And I dug those out and I've already been able to get my pickaxe that we made right before we came in here all the way up to a fortune 3 rating so now I can come in here and get the stuff we need look right here this is emeralds look at these lapis veins there's lapis vein there's more lapis there's more diamond there's really no point in mining the overworld as long as you you know once you get your first diamond just come mine this come mine these hills even set up a quarry on these hills and let it quarry it out real quick get your minerals and move on uh, it's it's just it's ridiculously easy breaking this stuff I mean now rather than getting because I've gotten fortune 3 now I'm gonna get maximum amount of mineral min uh, item drops I'm actually gonna take this right here because we've already got plenty of emeralds at home anyways and we're gonna take one of these emeralds and tack it on to the pickaxe increasing its durability so its durability now jumps up to an 808 dur durability and I still have two modifiers remaining which are probably gonna be redstone to speed it up but this thing is glorious it's gonna get me so many diamonds so I'm gonna mine out a bunch of these diamonds that we're gonna need I'm not, I don't know how much stuff I'm gonna mine out right now but I'm gonna get all this stuff mined out so we can go back and make the thermionic fabricator like we talked about uh, and probably I didn't think about this before we left but we have access to steel now steel was really the only component that was keeping us from being able to build like our uh, tinkerous construct hammers and stuff so we'll be back soon And we are back in the overworld, ready to get to work. So, after our little trip, we had a lot of lapis, which I've now laid down to make a nice little path around my village. We could say we're living large, you know, rich. I've gone ahead and made some steel. I uh, started making more coal coke. I've gone ahead and put some iron in here and smelted it down, as well as some of the tin that we've got. Still sit on a bunch of redstone, and I've begun kind of organizing the boxes in the base. But we've got a few things left on our to-do list. Now, we need to get the assembly table done and the lasers. So let's look at the recipe for those. Assembly table. That's going to require a single diamond and a diamond gear to get a diamond gear. We need a gold gear to get a gold gear. Well, you know how to get a gold gear. So let's go get some gold smelted down. Do I have any on me? Or did I already pocket all that stuff? There's some gold. So we'll put some gold in the smeltery right quick. Let that start melting down. And we'll need some obsidian. Six obsidian. That's one of the few things that I did not get. So we're going to do something simpler than what we did last time to get some obsidian. Now, we did upgrade our pick further. Our pick now has 50 redstone on it to upgrade it to give us a bit more uh, speed. I don't know if you can use these for upgrading. Nope, you can't. My chisel is gone. It broke. It has died. We need to fix that. I do not like not having a chisel because, in fact, I need a chisel right now for what we're about to do. I probably have some sticks somewhere if I look around. There's a stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stick, and normally I would place an iron ingot right here, and that would give me a uh, chisel. We're going to use a diamond instead, and we're going to get a diamond chisel. This one's a bit more powerful. The UI allows you to do single, panel, column, and row. The row and the column are going to be three blocks in their respective direction. The panel is going to be a nine block. It's a three by three, just like the hammer or the excavator from Tinker's Construct. So this is a much more powerful chisel, and it lasts a bit longer. What we're going to do with that is we're going to turn this back into redstone blocks. I was experimenting with possibly building with that. And we're going to step over here to our crafting bench. We're going to go ahead and upgrade our... Uh, pickaxe the rest of the way and what we're going to do is get that and then get this okay so there's one two three four five blocks in there times nine is 45 four right there makes 49 and there's 50 no there's 50 so put this in here twice and that's a fully upgrade so there we go we now have a mining speed of 14.25 fortune three pretty high durability repairable with stone it's a nice little hammer now we need to get some obsidian so how we're going to get obsidian this time 
is, if we can find it, let's see. There we go. We're going to take it to Spencer. And we're going to set up the same kind of setup that you guys, if you've watched my previous stream, or Let's Play series, uh, where I had my turtle where it was an auto obsidian generator. To do that, I need to locate my bucket. And there it is. So that we can get some lava. I'm just going to put this water back. So we'll take some lava from this guy. What? There we go. All right, and we'll do this somewhere kind of safe, I suppose. Uh, we'll set up our dispenser. We'll do it here. Okay, we'll need to put, we'll actually need a second bucket. No, we can do it with that right there. I didn't even think about that. That will work just fine, actually. Okay, so we'll let that water flow. No, we won't be able to do it from there. We'll, we'll, we will need another bucket. All right, let's get my diggers pack back right quick. And let's throw down. What's up, Teft? Welcome to stream. So we're going to want water flowing from back here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put some stone down right there. Pick this up. Open this up. Put this inside. Okay. So the idea here with this fancy smancy obsidian generator, because we don't want, you know, lava going everywhere, is we're gonna need some redstone. Oh, I've got some. Great. We can take, let's see, a button. Nope, we're gonna have to do 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 do. Actually, let's just do a lever. That'll be a little bit easier. So one, and I think we'll need a piece of cobble for a lever. There we go. We'll just set this right here. So the idea here, we drop one redstone on the ground, let the lava out, pull the lava back in, and we can mine our redstone up, or our obsidian up. So now we don't have to sit there and go get lots of buckets of lava to pour and waste and make obsidian. We can make all the obsidian we want. Very simple method. We're going to need six obsidian for our assembly table, and then we're going to want to make a couple of lasers, or at least one laser, and each laser is going to take an additional two. So I'm going to need to get ten more obsidian right quick. So I'm going to mine that up, YouTube, and then I'll be right back with you. All right, Beat the Beasters, we're back. As you can see, we've got some engines out. I finished using the handy-dandy stuff dispenser. That's it. And I've got some of my our obsidian ready to go. I've also gone ahead and poured the golden gear. So, we're going to just set some stuff to the side here. Now, I've got some diamonds. Four of them is what we're going to need. We're actually going to need five. And we'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's see here. Crafting table right here. So, we'll take these four diamonds. Put them around the gear. That'll give us our diamond gear. Now, what we were trying to make was an assembly table. So for this, we need one redstone. I think I've got that somewhere around here. There we go. One diamond. Got that right there. Let's, we need to toss something. Uranium will go. There we go. All right, so that, that, this, and some obsidian. And that gets us our assembly table. Woohoo! We're ready to start making chipsets. Almost. Not quite, but almost. But that does take the assembly table off of the to-do list. So let's knock that off right quick. And now we are ready for a laser. Or two. Now for the lasers, we're going to need some obsidian and some redstone. And then we're going to need these electric tubes. Now these tubes come from the thermionic fabricator with some sand and more diamonds and more redstone. 
So, where have I done with all of my redstone? There's some redstone. Okay. We've got diamonds on us. I don't think I have sand on me, but let me look. You never know with me. I do have sand on me. Okay, so there's a little bit of sand. We should have more sand somewhere. There's some sand. Alright, so we're going to grab this sand. And we're going to toss these out and these out. Now, to run this thermionic fabricator, we're going to need RF. And to get RF, we're going to need a way to get RF. Well, that's what these guys are for. These steam engines can produce RF for us. I've got three of them set up. And for now, I'm just going to stick this right here. Now, I could attach this directly to them and get RF out of them. And I've already tested these to make sure they're going to run. And I've got them all set up to where they're going to receive a redstone signal from this one piece of cobblestone from this lever. I've already filled them up with water. So water, water, and water. And the other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put some fuel in them. So I've got a little bit of cold coke right here that we're going to put inside of each one. And remember that cold coke is twice the density of regular coal. Now here's where the, the next part comes in. Rather than having him set up on them or building a bunch of uh, basic pipes which we could get from these BC pipes and we would need to make the uh, oh, what are they called we can't get to the flux ducts and stuff yet but we'd, we would want to go with the basic pipes I just can't think of the name of them right now golden flux or something like that let me find it fluid it's these it's kinesis, yeah, right here. Golden kinesis pipes. I was right the first time. So these transfer 2560 RF per tick. And they're not too terrible to make. It's just take some gold and some glass and then add a little once you get the pipe, you add some redstone to it. And but they get clunky and they take up a lot of space. Instead, we're gonna go straight into immersive engineering, and I've already made some of these medium voltage wire connectors. They take hardened clay and some iron ingots. So right here I've got the pattern all set up so I can make some more of them. And what we're gonna do with these things is we're going to attach them to the top of the handy dandy hobbyist steam engines and then we're going to attach to the side of the thermionic fabricator we're going to want sand inside of here and if you remember the recipe it was going to take some diamonds a total of five so we'll put the recipe in right here set the diamonds down and then we'll need some redstone it only needs two redstone so we'll have enough redstone to do several of the recipes we've got plenty of sand in there right now and now the next thing we're going to need is a way to hook these things up. So we're going to need some medium voltage wire. So if we look up MV, MV wire coil right here, it takes electrum ingots. Electrum is simply gold and uh, silver mixed. So I've gone and gotten a little gold and silver. I threw it in the smeltery and I've already smelted it up. Here's 12 of it. I've got four of it on me. And to make this coil, you just take four of these around a treated stick, which comes from immersive engineering, which we've already talked about. So we're going to combine these together and we're going to get two wires. Now we're going to want more wires than that, but this will work to start. We actually need three. Now the cool thing is, while you're using medium and low voltage, you can connect these wires just by right-clicking and right-clicking, and you can have multiple wires coming into a single one of these. A high voltage doesn't work quite so easily, but these will work fine. To answer your question, uh, Wes, those will be absolutely fine for running a Minecraft server. Um, if the hard drives are mechanical, it would be nice to see them upgraded to solid state, but mechanical drives work fine. They're just not quite as quick. And so, yes, you could run Minecraft servers off those. So now we have our last piece of medium voltage wire right there. Everything's set up and ready to go. We just need to power this bad boy. So we're going to turn these on. They're going to start to prime. They're going to heat up. And as they heat up, they boil the water. The boiling water will produce steam. The steam engine will start moving and we will produce power. So we see we've got this no power sign flickering off and on. It's because the power hasn't stabilized yet. They're starting to push a little power through the lines as they build up steam. But it's not much. Right now it's 2RF, 2RF, 2RF. These things will get going pretty good here in a little bit. And when they do, this will start to fill up with power. So we're going 
give that just a sec. They're getting pretty hot now. The hotter they get, the more RF they produce. And I believe this should work. I've never actually tried it this way, so I'm, I'm hoping I'm right that this works. It appears that it does because it is showing power flickering off and on here. But it's also not acting like it's transferring the power out. Now there are medium voltage capacitors. These are very easy to make. Redstone, some lead, some electrum, and some iron ingots. I'm actually going to go ahead and make one of these. So, exact recipe was two electrum. We got some lead somewhere. There's some lead and some iron. Let's run in the house for just a minute. And let's get some treated wood. And what was the other item? A redstone block. Let's grab a couple of those. We're going to go ahead and craft a couple of these medium voltage capacitors up. Well, we should be able to. Oh, I'm all, I've only got one piece of lead. What? Was it, did I miss something? Iron, iron, electrum, lead, electrum, treated wood, block of redstone. That's very odd. That should be working. Am I missing something here? Treated wood planks, block of... That recipe should, unless this recipe has been disabled for some reason, that recipe should work fine. Oh, this is aluminum, as usual. I don't I really do not like the graphic they chose for aluminum. There we go. And it's finally pushing through. So we've got a lot of RF stored up, but it is pushing into the machine. So let's grab actual iron. And we'll go ahead and grab another lead ingot while we're here so that we can make two of these. I think it's the machine, Ultev. I think that uh, it has a low uh, flow rate into that machine. That's why I'm going to make the capacitor. So we're going to make two of these capacitors. And we will need to interact with these capacitors. You're going to want your engineering hammer. So let's run out here again. And what we'll do is we'll set down... We'll set one of these down right here for now. So on this capacitor, blue means input. So we'll put this down here. And we'll just run a cable from here down to here. And we can see that energy starts to be pushed into this machine now. So it's picking up RF. So what we could do technically is we can take these three and run them all directly into this and let them power this and then we can take our engineering hammer and out of the orange side which I'll just set up another orange right here it can pull the power out of here and put it into there and if you look we've already made our first diamantine electric, electric tubes so these guys are pushing power in this guy's pushing power out now this is done we're not trying to make any more right now I should have here, I think. Nope. Oh, here. I got rid of them all. What did I do with all my sticks? I turned them all into ladders a minute ago. That's what I did with them. Okay, no big deal. Make a couple sticks. And do I have some kubel somewhere? Maybe in my diggers pack? There we go. Sometimes I hate when I have that bag set up that way. All right, let's run out here. Now this machine, this thermionic fabricator, if you have it hooked up to a power network, it will constantly pull power, even if it's not in use. So you might want to turn it off.
when you're not using it. And these guys keep pushing, and they're just filling this capacitor up now. So they're at full power now. They're going to continue to pump and produce steam and continue to produce RF until they reach their capa their capacities. And I'm just going to let it fill up this uh, MV capacitor so that I have additional RF to be used. Now, the other thing that this is good for is with immersive engineering, unless something has changed, you're going to be able to pull the same exact power that's going in right now as RF back out as EU, which we're going to need for our metal former and for our compressor later. But we have what we need right now to do the next portion of our crafting. And for the next portion of our crafting, we want some of this redstone. And we want to do two obsidian. And we want to do five redstone. And we want to grab these diamond tubes. And these diamond tubes we can take and stick in here. And that's going to give us our two lasers. So at this point in time, we're now able to set up our assembly array if we wanted to. So we could do something like uh, two lasers. Whoops. And you can just break these back off with your pick. And we can put our table right in front of them over here. Now keep in mind, these things, just like everything else, they're going to take power. Okay, so let's come right here. Where's my hammer? Right there. Set this side up as orange. Let's go ahead and break these back off. I don't have enough cable at the moment to make both of them, but I will go ahead and set up one of them. And we'll run cable from there to there. So this is now able to take power. So if I had a pattern in here, like a redstone chipset, this laser is going to kick on and it's going to begin trying to attempt to make this redstone chipset. So we've got lasers and we've got power and we're off and running. There you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos. If you liked it, hit that like button for me. If you want to keep seeing more of what I do and how I do things and watching me derp out, go ahead and click the subscribe. Either way, leave me a comment and let me know what you think that I did well and what you think that I did poorly so that I can improve how I show other people what I do. You guys have a fantastic evening. Be good to one another and I'll see you next time. Laters.